My name is Kim McKeon and this is Book That Commercial. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and head over to the website, www.bookthatcommercial.com. There's some freebies up there. There's some merchandise for all my bookers. And I'm a commercial audition coach, so if you need help with your commercial audition, I am here for you, okay? Just click, click, click on the website. All right, so today I wanna talk about, this is gonna be a very quick video, because there's really, I feel like there's really not much to tell. <clears throat> so some of you may or may not know, I am new to the Southeast market. I came to the Southeast market in March of 2019 after being in the New York market for eight years. Um, the reason why I wanted to come down to the Southeast market was to just expand my resume. Okay, so in areas of commercials and television and film. So, <sighs> made that transition, which was a very interesting transition. That's also another video. <laughs> but this quick video, I just want to talk about like what, what are the differences that I've seen so far um, between New York and the Southeast market and what are some things that are the same. So, and of course, this is all in regards to commercials. Why? Because this is book that commercial. That's why. <laughs> so, okay. So, let me think. I think one of the many, many differences in the Southeast is compared to the New York market is it's slower. Okay. People talk slow. People drive slow uh, to a certain, uh, I feel like on the highways, people just drive crazy. People don't know how to drive down here, but people talk slow. They walk slow. They drive slow. They think slow, which drives me crazy. Um, and you know, New York, New York is just like hustle bustle. People are on the move. Um, obviously down here in the Southeast is, uh, much more space. It's more open, kind of like laid back. You can breathe. You're not living on top of people. There is no subway. Um, they do have a MARTA train system down here though. Um, but it's, um, it doesn't go underground, does it? I don't know. If it's, I've been on it a couple times. Um, but yeah, so, you know, so those are just like some huge differences, obviously, but I feel like Atlanta in the next five to 10 years is actually going to be just like Manhattan. So that's my prediction just by looking at things now and hearing about how Atlanta has just grown tremendously in the past 10 years uh, with the entertainment industry moving down here. Um, if the entertainment industry continues to uh, move down here, film down here, set up shop down here, within the next five to 10 years, it's going to be exactly like Manhattan bananas crazy so but the thing about it is there's so many beautiful outskirts of atlanta um in the state of georgia that you know there's so much room down here so even if it does turn into manhattan even if it atlanta the city of atlanta turns into manhattan there's still so much more greenery and open space that you can live in and luxuriate in and filming and um, you know because Georgia is a big state a beautiful state there's a lot of room and stuff like that so let's bring it back to acting so when I was in New York excuse me I was auditioning a lot especially in the areas of commercials so the last uh, came in 2019 so from 2015 to 2019 I have booked 20 principal roles. Um, I've worked uh, on industrials, promos, new media commercials, internet commercials. Um, I got a couple of national commercials under my belt. Um, uh, let's see, what else, what else? Done some voiceover. Um, I was a recurring actor for promo for ABC. Um, I had industrial clients call me back to do, um, more work for them. So I had a pretty good flow going, but I wanted to not get stuck in just doing non-union commercials forever, you know, um, which I don't have, I don't have a problem with doing commercials. I love commercials and I feel like I've learned to embrace commercials. I didn't always love commercials because I was just doing them so much, constantly auditioning for them, constantly booking them that I didn't get a chance to like really breathe and, and realize what was really going on. And I realized, wow, this is an area that I'm really kind of like an expert in, in a way. And I'm talented in this area, highly skilled in this area, highly knowledgeable in this area. 
And I just had to learn to embrace that because I always did not embrace that. So I've learned to embrace that and I love it. Um, I want to elevate and grow and work on bigger brands, bigger sets, national commercials, yada, all, all the candy that just flows in the air. So, you know, and that's the goal for any actor, whatever your lane is or whatever your area is, you want to, you know, hopefully grow and move up, um, and continue to do that because this is a long journey. And um, so I wanted to do that. And um, and I also wanted to do more television and film. So I felt like let me move to the Southeast so that I could expand my horizons. Um, oh, and also, it was also, there were some personal things going on where I needed to like physically move and emotionally, psychologically move from the Northeast. It was just too much going on there um you know i was kind of tired of new york i was tired of the hustle the bustle um the stress the just like I, I was burnt out now looking back on it like i realized a year after i moved here like oh i was burnt out in new york i literally was burnt out yeah so that's why i had to go and then you know as you get older you know i'm not 21 anymore even though i look it <laughs> um yeah, you get older and your goals change, your lifestyle requirements and things that you want for your lifestyle change as well. So that was another reason why I wanted to leave the Northeast. Um, and I also do not like the snow and I do not like the cold weather. So that was another thing on top of that that was like, yeah, I got a piece about here. So I was happy that I could stay on the East Coast. I was happy that I could come to the Southeast and still... Um, not be too far from home because I did consider to I, I did consider going to LA at one point as well which I still the LA is still on my mind I still would love to um, work in the LA market but yeah so I decided to come to the southeast and it just made sense in so many different areas it made sense things fell into place like not perfectly but almost perfectly I'm like oh wow so this is kind of like meant to be it was just like an easy transition how it happened and so when I came here before I came here I had applied for representation multiple different places um, because I had heard that, you know, it's getting harder to get an agent down in the Southeast. So a year before I came, I already started like sending out submissions and stuff like that. And a couple, I got a couple of hitbacks, but really what I learned later on is that if you do not live in the Southeast, let me say it again. If you do not live in the Southeast, it is not going to be easy to get representation. I'm, I'm not going to say it's going to be hard to get representation. It's not going to be easy because the agents down here, they are not signing. They do not want to sign people that do not live here. Okay. So a couple of them said, okay, well, when you move down here, we're interested, but when you move down here, then hit us back. So I'm like, okay, cool. So when I get down there, I'm going to reach out to these two people, sign the dotted line. I'm going to start auditioning because like back in New York, whenever I, as soon as I signed with my manager, as soon as I signed with one of my agents, I had, I had a, a legit agent in New York. I had a, another and two agents, a commercial agent, a regular agent, and I also had a manager. And every time I signed with each and every single one of them, except for the legit one, that was, and that's because she was new to the agency and she was new to the industry. So she didn't really have relationships and connections like that. Really, at the end of the day, I learned that. But the other three, as soon as I signed with them the same day, if not that same exact week, I was auditioning. And it just like, it just was nonstop, really. I mean, I did have some down periods, like where it's kind of slowed down. But for the most part, I was always consistently auditioning in New York. So I'm thinking that's going to happen here in the Southeast. And I thought wrong. I thought wrong. Big time. So anyway, yeah, those two didn't pan out. They kind of like ghosted me. Uh, I had two more agents that I submitted to that literally was having communication with me. They were seemed like they were interested. They were saying they were interested and then literally just stopped communication. They were just literally ghosted me. I have never had an agent ghost me. I was like, this is strange this is really really weird i'm like this I, I i don't even know what to do or say with this like i've never and nobody had ever experienced it i talked to another friend down here and it, it has happened to her too so maybe it is a southeast thing maybe southeast agents they do ghost people that's the thing that they do hey okay so anyway after that happened i had to start my whole process again of, of finding an agent you know doing that whole submission thing and i mean i go in i like was like 
sending out to every single, I had a list that I had first sent out to those people, waited a week or two, you know, a month. Then if I didn't hear anything, then I had another list. So I was just going to town. I finally was able to sign with somebody in May of 2019, sign with her. She was actually based in the Carolina. Looking back on that situation, I think that that was the reason why it wasn't as successful for me because all of her clients, majority of them were in the Carolinas. She had a handful that were in Atlanta and there was really nobody here in Atlanta to really push, pitch and submit them like consistently, you know, every day, um, you know, cause she had her hands full with the Carolina people, which is great. You know, that's awesome for them. Um, but that situation didn't work out. So then I hit the drawing board again at the beginning of, at the end of 2019. And then the beginning of 2020, literally right before COVID hit, I I signed with a bi-coastal rep. They're based, they're based in LA, but they do have a office here in Atlanta. They're kind of new to Atlanta. I think they've only been here three or four years. Um, so I decided to take a chance and go with them because it's like, what do I have to lose? You know what I'm saying? So I don't have anything to lose. So with that being said, um, you know, and I didn't start auditioning right away. When I signed with my first agent down here in 2019, I did not start auditioning right away. There may be some people that are brand spanking new to this market. As soon as they get here, they start auditioning right away. That was not my, um, that was not my situation. Um, and I was so used to that. So it was kind of like a culture shock in a way. I was like, oh, this is different. And I had to remind myself, this is different. This is a different place. This is not New York. This is not New York. I'm like, okay. So I had to really get used to the way that the South moves down here, how my journey was going down here, how, you know, just things were going for me. And at the end of the day, I had, you know, I just had to remind myself that you are doing the best that you can. You're doing what you can. And, um, a lot of things are out of your control. The only thing you have control is your marketing materials, make sure your headshot, your website, uh, your resume, your reels, all of that is up to date and looking squeaky clean and amazing. Um, doing your research on the people that you're submitting to, you know, you sit out your cover letters and all that kind of stuff. Make sure all that thing is like nice, tight and, and pretty and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, it's really, you know, you can reach out to people two or three times because agents are busy. You know, there's a busy season and a kind of like a lighter season. And um, but at the end of the day, you can't control people. You can't force people to sign. You can't force people to look at your information. And you just have to just keep moving forward the best way you can. So after I got with this new agency, then Corona hit. So, yeah, so 2020 was not really a wash, per se, because like things started picking up in the summer of 2020 in Atlanta. Atlanta reopened in the summer. So some production started popping back up again. So commercials were popping in like August, September, October, at end of August, September and October, commercials were popping. I did book two commercials on my own um, because you know, I am a self-submission queen. I'm not waiting for anybody to give me opportunity. I submit, submit, submit to things that I feel like I fit and I wanna do. Um, that's why Actors Access is one of my best friends. Um, so yeah, so that was 2020 and now we're in 2021 and, um, some opportunities have come my way and, you know, I'm just continuing to move forward and, you know, it's not, my journey is not the same down here. And also too, um, I've only really been down here, it'll be two years in March, but I feel like Corona has taken like six to eight months chunk out. So, you know. And also, too, when I first moved down here in 2019, I was getting a lot of commercial auditions. I do want to say that 2019, when I moved here, I got a lot of commercial auditions. And I've heard in 2020, there's a lot of uh, actors in the Southeast as well that were doing a lot of commercials, which makes sense because I got a lot of commercial auditions in like September and October, November-ish. I was getting a lot of commercial auditions. And this, these were commercials that I was um, some I was self-submitting on Actors Access and some were coming from my agent as well. So yeah, it was, was a very, very busy commercial season, I know. And then I also heard that LA had a very, very lucrative and, and, um, very, very busy and productive and awesome commercial season in 2020 out in LA as well. So that's, that's good to hear that Commercials were popping, you know, and I'm sure New York, it was, New York was on fire as well. Um, so 
2020 was a good year for commercials. So entering 2021, hoping for more commercials, great commercials to come my way, um, some great TV projects, film projects, um, and, you know, hoping our industry can recover, which I think we are going to recover because we're so resilient. We're going to recover from this corona. Um, America's going to recover. The world's going to recover from this. We're going to bounce back and um, we're going to, it's going to be better than ever. So that was just my journey, my journey so far. I mean, I still feel like I'm new in Atlanta, so I really don't have much to say about like commercials in Atlanta, but I do know that Stillwell Casting is a huge commercial casting house here um, in Atlanta. And my advice to anyone who wants to do commercials in Atlanta, I would say definitely get your agent before you come here or, you know, have an address here, have it make it look like you live here because they're not going to, I shouldn't say they're not going to, but it's a huge, it's a big possibility that you're not going to get signed if you look like you do not live here and you don't have an address here. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, and you know, if you sign with one of the bigger agencies, you really don't have to worry about asking them, oh, do you have any connections to still wall casting? And um, you don't really have to worry about that. But if you sign to a smaller boutique agency down here in the Southeast, I would ask them first, like, do you have um, a relationship with Stillwell Casting? Do a lot of your um, clients get auditions for Stillwell? Do a lot of your, does Stillwell actually, um, you know, book a lot of your clients for their projects? Like, I would ask them about that. Um, and then research some other, you know, casting directors down here too. Shannon Reese is also another major casting director down here. I've auditioned for her. Sheesh, so many times. She is great. Um, I really appreciate her always calling me in, or I should say calling me in, self-tape. It's a self-tape industry down here. So always, um, you know, uh, asking for auditions from me or when I submit to her, she always sends me an audition request. So that's great. Really, really great. So yeah, I would definitely have that agent before you move here. If you do, ask them about Stillwell Casting. It's a huge main hub. Also, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of commercial production in Florida. Um, Miami and Orlando, psh, lots and lots of commercials. So if you are willing to drive um, or if you want to be a local hire, I would definitely look into actually getting representation in Florida as well um, as Atlanta. Um, and also there's a huge um, commercial casting house in the Carolinas called C&J, Corgan and Johnston. And before the pandemic hit, they had a lot of commercials coming out of there. So, you know, again, I would definitely ask my agent, do you have um, a relationship with them? Um, because they they send out a lot of auditions as well. So uh, CNJ, still a little casting. Um, Florida has a lot of commercial production as well. And um, for the most part, most of the productions down here are non-union. Uh, Georgia is a right to work state, so you can be uh, a union person and you can work on a non-union uh, production um and you can be a non-union person and you can work on a union production so um it because it is a right to work state the um the union the sag after union is not really um i don't want to use the word heavy after union is not really as prominent down here i feel i think um of course in la and new york those are the hubs of the entertainment industry so sag after a the union is very, very uh, prominent up there. Um, and so also in Los Angeles, that's why you have a lot of union commercials. Um, a lot of the union commercials are shot in Los Angeles. Um, when I was in New York, there were a lot of non-union commercials. Um, I think there's a, hand, a good amount of, of union commercials too, um, but I feel like LA has the bulk of them. Uh, and I think Vancouver also, um, a lot of... Uh, Commercial production is in Vancouver and Toronto as well. So again, that's just like, uh, I don't want this video to be too long or why I'm going longer than what I wanted, but I just wanted to just talk about some differences that I've seen between my New York commercial life and my Southeast commercial life. And I'm sure I'll have to do an updated uh, video to this because again, I'm just getting started here in the Southeast. Um, I've only been down here a year and change. I had booked a total of four, I've booked six commercials in the Southeast since I got here in March of 2019. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, just, I'm, I'm just continuing to move forward and continue to learn and grow. 
And again, if you need help with your commercial audition, I am a commercial audition coach. Head over to www.bookthatcommercial.com and click, click, click on the link. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And I hope that you have a wonderful day and book that commercial. Book it, book it, book it. Bye.